Well, let's pray. Let's bow our heads this evening and let's ask the Spirit of God to, to just move and invade this room right now. Father God, I come before you tonight, God, and I ask that your Holy Spirit would just come into this place. Lord God, you're already here. We've felt your presence. God, we know that worship, Lord, we have been uh, ushered into your presence, God. And now we ask you, Lord, for the reason why we are here is to hear your word. And I ask you tonight, God, in Jesus' name, that through your word you would uh, bring revelation to why we are here. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit would awaken us to truth in Jesus mighty name and we all said amen. amen tell your neighbor I'm going to pay attention tell your neighbor I'm going to pay attention you didn't tell your neighbor there you go all right there you go you didn't tell your neighbor all right open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25 we're going to be looking at 1 through 13 tonight and I, I want to read for a while, and then I, I want to go into dissect the word for us so we can grow. Matthew chapter 25, 1 through 13. The Bible says that at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five of them were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to him. Verse 7, and then all the virgins woke up, and they trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the doors for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know the day or the hour. Father God, I ask you tonight to anoint this word. I pray tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would reveal truth about your second coming, but also the value of discipleship. I pray tonight, God, that you would move supernaturally in this place. And that God, for the next few moments, you would use my life to preach the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' parable, the bridegroom for whom the ten virgins are waiting is actually the Savior himself. See, the bridegroom's arrival is clearly taking longer than expected. They were told to wait for the groom. They were told to wait. That the bridegroom was coming, which is Jesus. And they are to be ready for his return. The, he was coming home, the bridegroom. And the virgins were to be waiting. And see, as we're looking at scripture tonight, the bridegroom arrival is clearly taking longer than expected. For all of the ten ladies fell asleep. This reveals that although we cannot know the exact time of his return, the fact that Jesus has tarried 2,000 years and counting is not unexpected. There's a reason why the return of Christ has not taken place. But I'm going to say something that is, that is very scary for most churches and most people 
is they are not ready for his return. And yet they've been warned to be ready. They've been warned he's coming back. Let me tell you something. Uh, we, we have been caught up in an era in the church, and please forgive me. I'm not here to offend anyone, uh, but we're always here to scatter, to hear the prophet here, hear, uh, see the healer here. Uh, we need to run around town going to these bless me clubs and these bless me meetings. Let me tell you something. We need to be at our Lord's business doing what he's called us to do, to be prepared because Jesus Christ is coming back very soon, and he's He's coming back for a people that are waiting for him. I'm, I, I've been around a long time. And there's been, I've seen movements come in and go. In Hanford recently, there was this movement that came in, this Bless Me Club meeting where everybody wanted to get blessed and laughed in the spirit for an hour and everybody wanted to get touched and, and yet nobody's winning souls. No one's winning souls. No one's... No one's doing the work of God. Tonight, I'm, 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 I'm preaching from my heart that we need to understand something tonight, that we need to be prepared. See, the Bible says the wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. What does that tell you? They were ready. In case it was taking a little longer, we got some little oil on hand. If our lamps go dry, we're going to be okay. Do you know how you replenish yourself through the act of discipleship and training where you allow the Holy Spirit to deal with your heart and always be ready to do what God has called you to do? If, he, if the Lord were to come back, listen, there is no opportunity to get ready. Once he returns, done. It's scary. It's very scary. See, as we're reading verse 7, Then all the virgins woke up, and they trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. You, you know what kind of Christians those are? The ones that don't pray. They don't read their word. They expect a phone call. Hey, bro, pray for me. I'm going through it. Well, aren't you praying? I need some of your anointing on my life. Why? You don't have it? See, we have always been challenged to have a surplus in our lives. That means the word of God, discipleship, living holy, living righteous, living submitted to God, because he's coming back. And he told them, he told those ladies, you get ready. Five of them were ready, and they even had some extra oil. Just in case. Oh, I know a lot of, I, I have known people that have, please forgive me, but don't live right. And yet they get right every Sunday morning. It's like cheap cologne, it only lasts for about two hours. Only lasts for about two, then it wears off. <laughs> See, we got to live prepared because Jesus is coming back. Verse 13, therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Oh, you might think it, it's, oh, you know what? I've been, I've been serving God a long time now. and You start giving up. You know how you can tell Christians give up when they start having a plan B? I got a plan B for my Christianity. I, I got a plan B. You know, if this church thing don't work out, then I'll do this or I'll do that. I, I, I know a lot of folks, can I be honest with you, that have been converts to AA and NA. Because uh, the church thing and the relationship with Jesus didn't work out. So let me jump on the ANA panel, uh, wagon. And, and then I could be sober and I could say good things. But reality is I'm not serving God. And see, I'm going to tell you something tonight. The Bible says that, look verse 11, later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door. They couldn't enter into that relationship with Jesus because they were not prepared. 
You know what scares me tonight? Is that there's some Christians that aren't prepared. See, the bridegroom's revival, um, arrival is clearly taking longer than expected. For all ten ladies, they fell asleep. Can I tell you something? It's okay to take a break sometimes. But just be ready to wake up. It's okay to things in your ministry, you're serving God. And you got to take a break sometimes. And that doesn't mean fall in sin. What it means is you just take a break sometime. All right? You get refiled, refiled, you get refueled. <laughs> Some of you get refiled. You know, you got to, you, you got, you lost your file. You got to get refiled. Some of you. So later, the others also said, sir, they said, open the door. Look at verse 12. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I didn't, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day. Is it possible that because of our disobedience, we could actually fall out of relationship with Jesus? Or he could actually look at me and you and say, what's your name? It's horrible. It's scary. See, that's, that's why I, we preach discipleship in our ministries. We are very heavy on discipleship and training and, and letting people step up to the plate and give them an opportunity to serve and to lead. And you know what? You've got to be ready. to. And if, and if your time takes longer than normal, get ready. Your time will come. Jesus is coming back. You got to have your oil full. You got to be ready at any time when the when that announcement pro is proclaimed, when those angels proclaim that Jesus is coming, uh, that the return has happened. Uh, you need to be ready. Because if you're not ready, you'll be left behind. See, the foolish ladies are unprepared for the bridegroom, verses 8 through 13. They did not count the cost of being in the processional and did not really ready themselves for its delay. They weren't ready. There was a procession about to happen. And the Lord is calling them, and, and they were told to be ready. And they weren't ready. They were doing other things. One of the things they were doing is, listen, they, they, I have enough. That's what a lot of Christians do. I have enough. I go to church. You know, I do my commitments. I'm good. Problem is, you don't have any reserve. You're not living wholeheartedly to God. And when he returns, you're not ready. See, his return is at any time. See, the foolish virgins are unprepared for the bridegroom. They didn't count the cost that things might take a little longer. Like many others, the foolish girls have not understood the price of discipleship, sacrifice, and forethought. That's required to stand in the day of trial and to be assured that one's faith is real. Listen, only the spiritually prepared will enter the kingdom. You know why? Because our hearts are ready. The challenge I have for us tonight, where's our heart in terms of preparation? If the Lord says, be ready, listen, can I tell you what that means? Like, and there's a lot of people that know me. When I, when, when I tell you I'll be right there, that usually means about a half hour late. Sometimes. But you're prepared. See, the Lord's coming is, re he is very soon. But soon has been 2,000 years. I mean, that's a long time to be waiting. But can I challenge you on something? You need to be waiting. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready to step up to the challenge of blessing? Are you ready to see God change your life? 
You know, how much oil do you have? How much oil do you have? Fill your lamps up. But they had some kept in a jar just in case it took a little long. There was a sense of preparation in their hearts. Are you prepared to wait for your blessing? I know Christians that mess up because they're waiting for their blessing. They just bless themselves. They just bake their own cookies. Make their own tortillas. Grandma made good tortillas, but, you know, I want them now, so I'm going to try to make these things, and they're nasty. (laughs) They're not waiting for a blessing. See, there are too many disciples, too many Christians. God wants to bless And they just will not wait on God. They run out of oil. You know what they think? I can just go to the church the next day, get what I need. I've just emptied myself. I'll go to a bigger church. It's so big, I don't even want to there. And I had my, my, my religious inoculations. I just got a shot of religion. No, you need to be prepared for the return of Christ and be ready to serve him at any notice and say, God, I am ready for you right now. There's nothing in my life that would that would would not allow me to go into the kingdom. I am ready right now because, listen, every disciple that is serving God, there is also not only the second coming, but there is a blessing on earth. God wants you to have. And many times you've got to wait for that blessing. You gotta tarry. You gotta wait. You gotta do your job. You gotta be prepared. See, we cannot trust in the spiritual readiness of others. Being ready to enter the kingdom at our Lord's return, or should he tarry, remain faithful. When our rescue seems long and coming is something that we are responsible for as individuals. We must see that our lamps are being fed, being full. You got to feed yourself. You got to make sure your lamps are full. Don't run on empty. That's when you backslide, when you run on empty. You backslide when you stop waiting on God and you don't allow yourself to have that reserve. Or you don't keep your Bible full or, or used. And it's like, you, you, you know, you, you haven't gotten into your word in such a long time. You, you haven't prayed. It's in that time that you could be robbed. You could be robbed. You start settling. I know many people that sit in church and they don't do anything. They just go to church late. They leave early. They don't do anything. They'll tell you where they go. They'll tell you who their pastor is. But their lamps are empty until tragedy happens. Pastor, you got a minute? Can we talk after church? And I always know what that means. Something's happening. Because they were running their lives with no jar of oil, no, no reserve, no extra oil. And when tragedy hits, they want to bail out. See, tonight I'm talking about being prepared for his return, being prepared for his opportunity. Because if you're in this room tonight and you're serving God, there's an opportunity about to hit you. Are you ready for it? Are you prepared to go to the next level of what God has for you? And the only way you're going to be ready is if you keep your lamps full and you got some extra on the side. See, we're we're in a dangerous place. See, these foolish girls did not understand the price of discipleship. You know what they did? They looked at everybody else with extra oil. You know what they thought? Ah, if it came down to it, I could just borrow some. I don't have to be ready. They saw everybody doing it. Let me tell you something. 
Serving God, there's no secrets to it. Pray, read, stay away from sin, stay in fellowship, worship God. You'll be all right. There's no secret. Well, God just blesses people like that. No, you know why? Because they always have an attitude that it's okay to just barely have enough. And you can't do that no more. See, would you be considered wise or foolish tonight? Why is it important to understand this? Look at Matthew 24, 42. Matthew 24, 42. Matthew 24, 42. The Bible says, and we're going to read through a few verses. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has not put in charge of the servants in the household to give them their food? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Let me tell you something. If God's put you in charge of something... When he returns, he better find you doing it. I get amazed at people that just do church good. Man, they are, they do church good. They look saved. They even smell saved, you know. They just, I don't smell nothing crazy on them no more. He's serving God. But you know what? We've got to be ready as the master has not returned We've got to be in a place of expectation. And if he told you to do something, you need to be doing it. Point blank. We're talking about discipleship is being obedient. I know people that are more obedient to their pastors than they are to Jesus. Oh, yeah, pastor, we're obedient to the pastor. But what you're doing is you're just hero worshiping. Because at the end of the day, when you're at home, it's not all about Jesus no more. So We've got to radicalize our faith. We've got to get to a place where we are so obedient to God that if he tells us to do something, we do it until he returns. Because the Bible says when he comes back, it is best to see that he sees you doing what he told you to do. Church know the pastor ain't going to be there. You'd be surprised how many people don't show up. Hey, who's preaching this morning? Uh. <laughs> it's true. I was a guest speaker at a church in Los Angeles once, and this lady walks in. And she saw me, and I don't go to that church. I just, I'm a guest speaker. So she walks up to me, and she says, oh, good morning. Uh, are, are you preaching this morning? And I go, yeah, I am. She goes, okay, Bye. Just like that. Cold. I guarantee you in her personal life, she's not being obedient to God. She's allowed her own personal persuasions to dominate her individual discipleship with Jesus Christ. Oh, I know people that won't allow the Lord in. God has called them to do something, and they are not doing it. We need to make a radical, radical change in our hearts. We do. We need to get Jesus to un- in our lives so much that we are so obedient that if he calls us to do something, wait for your blessing. Don't give up on him. Just hold on. Your blessing will come. I'm lonely, Pastor. I'm lonely. Well, wait. 
I needed a job, pastor. So God gave you a job that knocked you out of church. Caught, caught you using again. Now you're smoking again. Now you're all messed up because God blessed you with a job. Guess what? I don't think so. Can I tell you something? The devil gives jobs, too. Oh, yeah, he knows how to employ people. He has job fairs all over the city. <laughs> oh, the devil, he runs job fairs. He wants to snag that Christian. Let me tell you something. It's a strategic attack against your life where you need to be prepared to do what God told you to do, not what your flesh told you to do. But when you're serving God, you got to be in a place of readiness to do whatever he's called you to do. Get ready to do what he's called you to do. Stop holding back. See, look what it says. 42. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know at what time or what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house has known at what time, the, um, the, what, what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have left his house to be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. See, God ain't going to wait till you sober up for him to return. Everybody say amen to that. God ain't going to wait for you to kick that guy out of your life. God ain't going to wait for your penicillin to finish his 10 days. Everybody say, oh, my. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servant? Is there anybody wise here today? People want ministry. They want the blessings of God, and yet they won't be attentive to the task that God has given them to do. If God has called you, then serve him well. Be ready when he returns. Do your job. If he's called you to do something, are you doing it? And if you're not, was it worth it losing what God told you to do? Was it worth it? I was just talking the other day to somebody who was saying, Pastor, you're doing a lot of stuff. And I go, you know what? This is what I'm called to do. I, I want to live it to the fullest. And right now, I'm waiting for leaders, even in this church, to rise up. Say, Pastor, I'll do it. And not do a favor, because I don't like people say, Pastor, I'll do it for you. Well, don't do it for me. Just sit down. <laughs> don't even worry. We got this. <laughs> but if you want to answer the call of God upon your life, and you want to be obedient to the call of God, then come on, let's do something for Jesus. Because I can't trust people to do me favors. But I can trust God, people that have committed themselves to God and say, God, I'll be obedient to you. See, we're talking about these ladies. While they were on their way to buy the oil, while they were on their way to buy the oil, they ran out. It's dark. They're empty. They thought they had time. Have you ever been in a place where you thought you had time? I'll make up for it later. I'll get right later. I'll, I'll, I'll change things in my life later. Have you ever thought like that? Well, they did. Oh, the master's coming. Oh, hold on. Let me go run to the Walmart real quick. <laughs> Let me go up to 24 hours Walmart. I must Walmart. Let's go. See, verse 10. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door. We got the oil. We even got a discount. We got the oil. Let us in. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. You know why he didn't know him? 
they weren't prepared. Let me tell you something about relationship. To be in relationship with Jesus means to be in a preparation mode to understand him and know him and what he wants. You have to know him to be in relationship. And, and, and you could be a new convert and still know him because you just got saved. You're knowing him, his love, and his mercy, and you're praying, and you're getting a hold of God. It's important to understand you can know him even as a new convert. But what's scary, they said later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door. But he said, but I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Then verse, verse 13 is interesting. Jesus there said, therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know the day or the hour. Isn't that amazing? Because of a lack of preparation of commitment to what Jesus told them to do, they lost their relationship with God. He didn't know him. Isn't that scary? If we get to a place where Jesus can look at you and say, Fred? No. Craig? No. Greg, that's what it is. How scary would that be? And you know why he doesn't remember us? I tell you why. Because you're not in relationship with him. He only knows those he's in relationship with. He commits himself to. And so this whole thing about being ready. You know, how many girls know how it is to getting ready in your makeup and you're getting ready and it's like three hours later and you're like, Four hours later, right? Five hours, forget it. I'm going home. <laughs> going to bed. You know what these ladies did, though? They went to sleep, but they still had an expectation that he would come. That's why when he announced his return, they were ready. See, tonight I'm asking you a question. Are you foolish or wise? He's coming back. Oh, how about this? He's coming back, yes. But he has told you in the preparation of his return to be doing this. Are you doing that? Is your heart in a place of preparation? Is your heart in a place of submission? Is your heart in a place of full commitment? See, where are you at tonight? If God were to tell you, be ready, are you ready? Hear me out. Some of the things this church needs, let me tell you what it needs. I wish everybody worried more about their prayer life than they do their vehicles. Is that true? <laughs> you hear that alarm going off? Everybody's worried it might be their car. Well, there's an alarm going off in our hearts and in this church right now. There is. Are you being attentive to that alarm? Scary thing. Oh, gentlemen, I missed that comment. I'm going to say that. I said, I wish we were more attentive to our prayer lives like we are to our cars. Because, can I tell you a secret? We ignore the alarms all the time when our prayer lives are being robbed. We ignore the, our, the alarms going off when our Bible study life is being taken away. When our holiness alarms are going off. When our language alarms are going off, we just ignore it. But when our car alarm goes off, we need to make sure no one's stealing our car. Let me ask you a question. Has your devotional life been robbed? How's your spirituality? Are you prepared for his return? That when that alarm goes off, like saying, Wake up and pray. Do you, 
you get up and pray. When the Spirit of God says, I want you to go witness to that person, tell them about Jesus, there's an alarm going off. Go witness to them. And we don't. There's a reason why we're here tonight, to, and I'm hoping to, to give a word of encouragement. But I'm also telling us tonight, it's all right, to be able to respond to respond. Everybody say respond. When those alarms go off, listen, even church workers, I see them at church. They're not paying attention to the preaching. They're so worried about everything else. It's almost like you go to church and walk away with nothing. Have you ever been there before? I can ask an usher, what did I say today? Oh, I don't know, Pastor. I was, I was worried about ushering. Wow. So then I robbed you. No, your position robbed you. You're, you allowed your lamps to go empty because you were ushering. When really, you're supposed to do both. Keep your lamps full and do your job. The Bible even talks about working until he comes. Being involved in ministry. Allowing yourself to be consumed with vision and saying, God, use my life. I want to make a difference. I want to make impact. I want to love people. I even rebuke the ushers of being rude to people. Say, listen, they come here to hear something from God. You need to love them. can do your ministry and still be full of God's love and not go dry. How many know what I'm talking about? How many know what I'm talking about? Where, where I, I need us to be a prepared people where if the Lord were to come back tonight, would we go? Or would we have to Google the nearest Walmart? Because I'm not ready to go because I've been messing up. Are you ready? Are you ready? See, they were all told to be waiting. The smart one said, you know, this might take a long time because you know God is always late. He's always late, so I'm going to make sure I got some extra manteca right there on the side. In case we got to pour this thing in here. I'm going to wait a little longer because this guy's always late. And I don't want to miss it. many Christians do you know? I know a lot of them that have missed their day of blessing simply because they weren't prepared to wait for his return or for their blessing. It's a trip. Can I tell you something crazy? When you counsel married couples, when you tell them as singles, don't get married, wait, and they just say, bah, and they go get married, then you see them in their office three years, three months later hating each other. <laughs> you know how tempted it is to say? I told you so. <laughs> but at this point, it's a done deal. I have to make it work. See, the challenge is, are you full? Are, is your oil full? If your blessing delays, will you still serve God? Will you continue to, to be obedient to God and wait for God? Because we as a church need to be ready and we need to be prepared. Keep your prayer life full. Turn off the television. Read some Bible. Watch what goes in. Because what goes in must come out. You take in garbage, garbage comes out. We got to challenge ourselves tonight. Are you wise? Or are you foolish? I'm going to tell you about foolish people. They will never, never, never keep enough oil on hand. They will 
always be in the flesh. They will always flesh out. You know why? Because they don't believe that they have to. It's, it's a pride issue. How many can say amen to that? And, I, and I'm talking about the return of Jesus, but I'm also going deeper. I'm talking about being ready for your blessing. Can I tell you something? Sometimes God does wait because he wants to make you a better person. God uses delay all the time. Did you know that? He uses delay all the time because it's usually what gets us angry the most, delay. Why am I? I waited, I waited, I waited. When you stop waiting, you can just start serving. See, as we're talking, as I bring this to a close, we need to really understand what God has for us. Let me get say amen to that. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him to a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For, for not being prepared? That's pretty crazy. Can I tell you why? Because a Christian, a genuine Christian, has a heart to wait on God to be obedient. See... It, it says so much here but suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself my master is staying away a long time he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards I know a lot of Christians like that they're either waiting on God or their pastor to bless them they want to be released in ministry or they want to do this for God and they won't wait so they, ju they just start living carelessly. See, verse 50, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and an hour he's not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know what it's all based on? Relationship. You start abusing people because you're just fed up. God and people, God will have his way. Wherever you're at tonight in God, you need to be at a place of obedience and serving. Wait, 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 wait. If he told, hey, if he told you it's amazing, remember what the, you went to the, the, the disciples? I'll be back. I got to go pray. What happened when he came back? They're all nodded out. Isn't that crazy? And he got mad at them. You couldn't pray for one hour? You couldn't pray for one hour. That time the soldiers came and it was done. What was going to happen was going to happen. We need to make sure we don't miss opportunity. God tells you to pray, you pray. He tells you to read, you read. He tells you to love, love. He tells you to forgive, forgive. And God will never bless you with a stumbling block. God has blessed you to cause you to grow. You'd be amazed people tell me God blessed them. Really? Why are you so broken? Why, why are you so broken? You got to get it right. But he's coming back. Every head bowed and every eye closed tonight.